Hello, I'm Ralph Edwards. The beautiful and talented subject of this edition of This Is Your Life, the classics, practiced her voice exercises continuously from the time she was born. At least that's what her neighbor said. And if you consider the fact she suffered from colic and cried for three straight years, the experience didn't seem to hurt her because she grew up to be a world-famous vocalist, actress, and proud mother of three teenage idols. Let's watch. Hello, I'm Ralph Edwards, greeting you from just outside our This Is Your Life studio. Inside the studio, a lovely star of one of television's most popular shows is taping a television promotion spot for her show. That's what she thinks. Now, this just happens to be her birthday, so we're going to throw a surprise party for her, and I'm going to present her with a very special gift. I should add that this beautiful young lady starred in such films as Oklahoma, Carousel, The Music Man. She's won the coveted Oscar and an Emmy nomination on television. So come on, join our This Is Your Life surprise birthday party. This is your life, an American tradition with Ralph Edwards. Hello, Shirley Jones and David Cassidy. I heard you. Hi, kids. How are you? Oh, nice I see heard you. you were making some promos for uh, the Partridge family. Yeah. Gee, I love that. This being a very special day for you, Shirley, I thought I'd drop around and say happy birthday and present you with a gift. All the kids kind of wanted you to have. This is a gold charm bracelet especially designed for you by Marshall Jewelers of Fifth Avenue, New York City. Isn't it beautiful, oh, Shirley? It's gorgeous. Yes, and we've also uh, kind of uh, arranged a surprise party and invited a whole lot of guests. Uh, haven't we, kids, huh? Yes. A whole lot yes. of guests. So open the door back there and let in the guests, if you will, please. Everybody, just come right on in. Now, <laughs> now Shirley, dear, here, hang on. This, 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 you just hang on to that charm bracelet. This, see, you may not know all these people, but they certainly know you. They're your fans. These are the people who uh, love you and watch you on the park, oh. family, and the whole business. Well, <laughs> Shirley, no. I, I really, I really don't think oh. I have to kid you anymore. I, you must know by now that the real reason I'm here is to say to you, Shirley Jones, this oh. is your no. life. <laughs> us uh, a story that uh, could easily have served for a movie scenario of the 30s. Small town girl wins acclaim and stardom on Broadway and in Hollywood. Come along, look, we got the Did Your Life set there and everything. <laughs> that your life story, Shirley Jones, would make a great movie scenario. Uh, but this is for real. This really happened. Where were you born, Shirley? In Charleroi, Pennsylvania. You had to think about that. <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to have to think about everything tonight. But at the age of three, your family moves to Smithton, Pennsylvania. Yes. A small town of some 600 souls, 28 miles south of Pittsburgh. Well, we know one person who was there on that memorable day, now Mrs. Edward Nasidlak of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, your mother, Marjorie, and here she is. <laughs> Can't quite tell which is the daughter here, can you? Come on over and sit down by your daughter. Uh, Mrs. Nasidlak, Marjorie, she said, call me. Uh, what do you remember most about your daughter as a baby? She cried quite a lot. <laughs> she cried? I think that's why she has such a great singing voice today. Really? She cried constantly as a baby. <laughs> Have you heard that uh, before? Yes, I've been told that quite often. <laughs> do you really think that developed, your singing voice? I guess so. Strong lungs, I guess. <laughs> your next-door neighbors hear you day and night, wailing away, Shirley, but they don't complain. You can't blame a poor little baby for crying. <laughs> Shirley's crying was Is that music Louise to and Uncle ears. Chuck? Uh, yes, from Smithton, Pennsylvania, oh! beloved Aunt Louise and Uncle Charles Page. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How long 
did uh, you and your family live next door to the Joneses, Mrs. Page? Until Shirley was 18 years old. Oh. And um, Shirley, you were a very happy... Yeah. Now look at the monitor. There's some home movies that they brought. She was happy, wasn't Oh, my she, goodness. Shirley, you were a very happy child. <laughs> and uh, playing with your cousins all the time and always laughing and skipping, but most of all, always singing. Now, Mr. Page, you had a front row seat in Shirley's life story. Yes, we certainly did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shirley, I guess you remember the Jones family's annual Christmas dinners at Sweeney's on Route sure 51. <laughs> Must have been quite a spread, huh, oh, Shirley? Yes. On one of those occasions, as a little girl, I think you chose to sing Frankie and Johnny. Yes, I did. What did your mom and dad think of that? We didn't like it. Didn't like no, it. we certainly didn't. But you went ahead and sang it anyhow. Even I at did an... most anything I wanted, I think. Most yes, you <laughs> seem to have developed a will of your own at an early age. And thank you very much, Mrs. Marjorie Nazidlak, Marjorie, and Uncle Charles and uh, Aunt Louise Page. Oh, Shirley, accompanying your mother from Florida is Jean McCahill sitting there in the audience. Right, you can wave to her. Hi, Jean. See, right there. In 1951, you're a junior at South Huntington High School in Pennsylvania, where the music teacher, Mrs. Phyllis Decker Rocker, gives you great encouragement. Under her tutelage, Shirley, you win the Pennsylvania All-State High School Soloist Singing Competition. Uh, Mrs. Rocker is the first to recognize your great musical potential. Upon graduating in 1952, your natural beauty and talent carry you to the preliminaries of the Miss America Beauty Pageant and you win the Miss Pittsburgh title. And by this time, mom and dad have already provided you with more extensive vocal training with a fine vocal teacher, Ralph Lawando. You also performed at the Pittsburgh Playhouse. As the musical director of the Playhouse, I was delighted to find a talent like yours, Shirley. Here from New York City is the man who opened the avenue to Broadway for you, Mr. Ken Welch. Oh, Ken! was uh, Shirley when you decided she was ready for New York and Broadway, Ken? Uh, I think you were 18, oh, right? I was, yes. <laughs> and I asked your mom and dad if they would give you permission to go with me to New York for a week to audition oh. for an agent that I knew. I sang for Kenny. He was the one. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. Yeah. What uh, and uh, there was this agent who uh, was very close to Rodgers and Hammerstein. I was very impressed when I saw you with your ponytails and heard you sing, I Shirley. I can't believe but it. Here from New York is the man who led you through the golden doors of Broadway's big-time musical shows, Gus yeah. Shermer. Yeah. Now, Gus Shermer, you said you were impressed, but now when you first auditioned Shirley, what happened? Well, she had to go back to Pittsburgh to do some summer stock, but I told her to come and see me in the fall. Uh -huh. And when Shirley came back, Gus? Well, she changed completely. She's gone with the ponytails, and she wore about a pound of makeup, and she was sophisticated, and I quickly called Kenny, and I said, Kenny, get her back to that sweet girlish look that I first saw, yeah. right? And what we did, we took off the earrings, we took off the I makeup, know. we put back on the dirndles, and we put the ponytail back on, and, uh, oh. and now you're ready to show Shirley off to Richard Rogers. What did he say, Gus? I think I'd better let Mr. Rogers tell you that himself. Because his doctor will not permit him to travel, here speaking to you on film, from New York, Shirley, is a great admirer of yours, the composer of countless Broadway hit musicals, Mr. Richard Rogers. Shirley, this is a very comfortable room. There's only one thing about it I don't like, and that's the fact that I'm not with you on your birthday, because I'd like to be able to give you a big hug and a big kiss. We've been friends for quite a few years now, and I remember the first time we ever met it was when John Fernley brought you around to auditions of South Pacific. And you went out in the alley with Gus Shermer and came back and sang for us. And it was a lovely voice and it was a lovely girl. And it's still both. And I'm awfully happy that Oscar and I had something to do with your beginnings. 
you had a small part and you did it beautifully. And now you have great big parts and you do them beautifully. And we're very proud of you. And I hope that this is just one of many very, very happy birthdays to come. And I send you my love. Thank you, Richard Rogers, and thank you, Gus Shermer and Ken Welch. And so, Shirley, your professional career sprouts wings to what heights they were to take you soaring not even you dared to dream in 1952. Well, you're still doing your bit part in South Pacific, Shirley Jones, when you're interviewed by Hollywood producer Arthur Hornblow, Jr., and director Fred Zinneman. We're looking for an ingenue to play the starring role of Laurie in the film version of Oklahoma. What happened there? Did they like you when they interviewed you, Mr. Well, Hornblow? I, I read for them and um, the very first reading and sang for them. And uh -huh. they liked me, but uh, they felt that I really wasn't experienced enough after that first audition. And, and uh, um, they to said, give you that uh, experience, Rogers and Hammerstein then, yes, put you in the chorus Rogers, of the road Mr. company of? Put me into me and Juliet. That's I was in that show too, Cheryl. Yep, your Is that dear, Shari? your dearest friend, Shari Price. I can't believe it. I have such a great friend. Oh, Shari. Well, you see, women can. I can't believe. Women can keep secrets. They had lunch together today, as <laughs> yes. you just heard Shirley say. You and Shirley shared a lot of wonderful times, didn't you, Shari? Oh, oh we sure did, Ralph. <laughs> but Shirley didn't stay in the chorus long. She got the second lead in the show and uh, the understudy to the star. And then the star got the flu, and Cheryl took over the starring role. And while in New York, you audition again for Richard Rogers, and he decides that you should do a screen test for Oklahoma. And how did it go? It went very well. <laughs> yes. And it was, uh, you did the screen test, then you went back to New York, I think. That's right. right. I went back to Chicago into Me and Juliet again. Uh -huh. And then Gus Shermer called you and said, you got the part. Your portrayal of Laurie in Oklahoma is universally acclaimed. Overnight, there's a bright new star in movie land's firmament. Well, what happened next, Sorry. Well... Shari. You say S-A... You spell it S-A-R-I, but you pronounce it Shari. Yeah, right? to fool people. Uh, you fooled me? You... We, uh... You fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> we took off for uh, Europe to uh -huh. do the stage version of Oklahoma, and uh, Cheryl's leading man was Jack Cassidy. And our first night in Paris, we double dated with Jack Cassidy and his roommate, remember? Yes, I sure do. <laughs> we, she stayed out very late that night. And <laughs> she came home all starry-eyed and told me she was going to marry that man. Well, let's meet that handsome young leading man that you said you were... What did you say? You are going to kill him when you got I'm him? I'm going to kill him. Internationally acclaimed star of stage, screen, and television. Your Paris date, Shirley. Now your husband of 15 years, Jack Cassidy. I was crying backstage because I thought they were going to do my life. That's <laughs> <laughs> luck with the habit. Well, you sit right there, and Shari Price, thank you very, very much. Thank you. See you a little later. Thanks, Now, Jack, uh, you and Shirley are working together in Europe now. Let's pick the story up from there. But that was interrupted because Shirley had to leave. Why? She, uh, she, the water didn't agree with her, Ralph. <laughs> oh, I, well, she came back, uh, she came back to star in the motion picture version of Carousel, Rogers and Hammerstein's, uh, play. Yeah. And I came back to work at Bucks County. You really and, uh, followed her, let's face it. I, I did a little chasing, <laughs> enough, that's true. As a matter of fact, I asked, uh, I asked Milady to be my wife the very first date. Yes. And then Have we, you ever uh, heard of a man eating five lobsters at one sitting? Now, you surely not only have heard of such a man, you were there at Brown Brothers Restaurant in Booth Bay, Harbor, Maine. And here is that super gourmand, superstar, one of the stars of Carousel, currently starring on television in High Chaparral, Cameron Mitchell. Well, uh, 
Cam, was uh, Shirley able to keep up with you and the five lobsters? Oh, well, as a matter of fact, as I remember it, she had two plus a dozen clams. <laughs> well, with that much food to consume, I imagine uh, you didn't have much time to chat across the table. Yes, we did. In fact, that song, If I Loved You, well, that's what we talked about. Uh -huh. Only she talked about her guy, which was Jack, and I talked about my girl, which was Lisa. And strangely enough, she married Jack, and I married Lisa, and yeah. even more strangely, we're still married. Yeah. <laughs> you see, these kind of Hollywood stories, ladies and gentlemen, you and Shirley were in many on location shooting scenes for Carousel, and that was the first musical, wasn't it? The first time I ever sang, and I was scared to death. <laughs> I, uh, well, I, we had to record with Alfred Newman and a 110-piece symphony orchestra at, wow. at Fox, and Shirley was... Uh, well, Shirley was an old pro. She'd already done one picture. <laughs> Actually, yeah. uh, Shirley, I remember you were very kind to me, and you calmed me down. You took all the anxieties out of it, and I'll always love you for that. Oh, how sweet. Now. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Cameron Mitchell. <laughs> well, your romance continues to bloom, and on August 12th, 1956, <laughs> you and Shirley are, as Jack said, married. Where, August Jack? August 5th. August 5th. Let me check that out of there, will August you? 10th. You give me another date yeah. like that, Cassidy, and that's... <laughs> uh, where were you married? Cambridge? Oh, I'm not sure now, right? <laughs> he still thinks it's a we were, we were appearing in the Beggar's Opera, uh, mm -hmm. and we were married in, at uh, a Swedish uh, Scottish Rite church, right ah. across from Sanders Hall. We were performing. And we were married in the afternoon, and then we had a matinee that day, and we were married again on stage within the play. This is at uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. In Cambridge, Massachusetts. In 1958, you and Jack Shirley are appearing at the Fontainebleau in Miami. When you get word that your father has passed away, you find strength in your marriage with Jack, and your career moves ahead to Hollywood. There are other starring roles for you, Shirley. In other pictures, April Love with Pat Boone, The Music Man with uh, Robert Preston. There you are. And Pepe with the great Mexican actor Conti Floss, and many others. Between pictures, your interest focuses on television. It's the night of November 8th, 1956, and you appear on that prestigious television show, Playhouse 90. I was watching Playhouse 90 that night, Shirley, and I liked what I saw. That voice belongs to a gentleman who played a very important part in your life, Shirley. Here from his home in London, England, the great film producer Bernard Smith. <laughs> The TV play you saw, Shirley, uh, that you saw Shirley in, I should say, was The Big Slide, starring Red Skelton. Is that right? Yes, right. and she played the role of an alcoholic. And I liked what I saw indeed, and I felt she could play the role of Lulu Baines, oh, a prostitute. Yes, you certainly in did. In the film <laughs> version of Elma Gantry, oh. which uh, Richard Brooks, the writer and director of the picture, and Burt Lancaster, its star, and I were casting at that time. That'd be quite a switch for Shirley, from the lovely unspoiled ingenue in Oklahoma and Carousel to a prostitute in Elmer Gantry. Quite right. And when I suggested it to Dick Brooks and Burt Lancaster, they were very unenthusiastic. I know, I remember. <laughs> and I, I do got, remember. I got a print of that, te of that uh, yes. Playhouse 90 film and showed it to them. They saw it. You were in. And for your magnificent performance in Elmer Gantry, Shirley, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences awards you the Oscar for the best performance by an actress in a supporting role of the 1960. Thank you, Bernard Smith. Producer of such memorable pictures as How the Rest is One, Cheyenne, Autumn, and many others. Thank you for coming all the way from England. Well, Shirley, how are you doing, girl? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> many songs have been sung since you were a lovely young high school girl. But the memory of those simpler days must linger in your mind as they do for this wonderful lady. Every time I came up the steps to the music room of the high school, Shirley, and heard you vocalizing, it made me tingle with joy. Shirley, it's your high school music teacher who really started the ball rolling. She's still teaching now in Eagle Pass, Texas. You haven't seen each other in over 15 years. Miss Phyllis Decker Rocker. <laughs> Tales are gone, Phyllis, but aside from that, Shirley hasn't changed too much, has she? Time will never change you for me, Shirley. Oh, how lovely to see you. And 
You're just as sweet and as pretty as you were many years ago. And I'm so happy to have had a small part in oh, your life. I'm Shirley, so I'm sure we'll always be grateful for a teacher's strong guiding hand. Yes, Thank you, sure Phyllis was. Rocker. Thank you. You're a lucky gal, Shirley Jones. You're actually the mother of two families, The Partridges on ABC on Fridays, that wonderful show, and all week long, your own real family. And here is that one. David Cassidy, Jack's son by previous marriage, and your three other, here's David, here's the star boy, and your three other boys, Sean, 12, here's Sean, Patrick, nine, and Ryan, if you please, five. family. Isn't this a handsome family, ladies and gentlemen? That's the stuff. Just hang right in there. Good deal. David Cassidy, your own career is just skyrocketing right now, and uh, you and Shirley double in, uh, in, in both families. Uh, do you, which gives you the tougher time? Uh, I have to say these three right here. <laughs> <laughs> although, I, although I work with the other ones. Well, let's you. meet the other ones. Let's meet the other family again. Your other family, the children from the Partridge family. Susan Day. Uh, we we'll go this way. we we'll go this way. Suzanne Crow and uh, uh, Danny Bonaduce is here. And this is Jeremy Gelbwax. And here is Susan Day. A birthday hug. What do I say? Well, the surprise birthday party we promised Shirley will continue at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel with uh, ice cream sodas for the younger ones, if you know. Uh, all of your out-of-town friends and relatives have been staying there, Shirley. Small Town Girl makes good on Broadway and in Hollywood. This is America. This is your life. Shirley Jones, Mrs. Jack Cassidy. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you. 